So, do you know why the ocean is salty? We didn't know the reason until 1979. The whole planet is covered with ocean, and we had no idea where all that salt comes from. We initially thought rivers were to blame because they can carry deposits and chemicals to the still waters. It wasn't until the late 1970s when scientists stumbled upon so-called black smokers that we realized they were the cause of the salty waters. They are, in fact, geothermal vents located along the mid-ocean ridge. They were generated from sediments of iron sulfide from deep within the Earth's core. Okay, remember dinosaurs? I don't. I wasn't around then. But they disappeared a long time ago. Yet how that happened was still up for debate within the scientific community for a very long time. Up until 1991, no less, the year the Chicxulub Crater was discovered. That's a big hole located underneath the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Many claim it was formed when a giant asteroid crashed on Earth. The oldest material ever found on our planet turns out to be older than our entire solar system. The Murchison meteorite plopped into Australia back in September 1969. But we made this staggering discovery after a newer analysis of its debris was done only in 2020. Did you know that there is a coral skyscraper hidden underneath the ocean and we had no idea? Only in 2020, a team of Australian scientists stumbled upon it when mapping the northern Great Barrier Reef. It's 1,640 feet tall, which, if you think about it, makes it taller than the Empire State Building. And no elevators. Do you know how mountains appeared? We didn't know that until 1966. And that also concerns earthquakes and volcanoes. Just think about it, we sent men into space before we even understood how and why the Earth under our feet started moving now and then. Only in 1966, a scientist named J. Tuzo Wilson published a piece in the journal Nature in which he explained that continents and oceans are constantly moving. He also wrote about tectonic activity, meaning things like earthquakes and how mountains rose from the Earth's surface. Until 2021, we hadn't mapped out a full human genome sequence. The concept of DNA was first presented by a Swiss scientist back in 1869. But specialists remained partially in the dark as to DNA's physical structure until Rosalind Franklin and Raymond Gosling took pictures of it and found it looked like two twisting strands. Ever wonder what the largest living organism in the world was? For a long time, scientists did too, because they only stumbled upon it in 2000. It's a fungus that lives 3 feet underground, but is estimated to spread across 2,200 acres. Located in the Malheur National Forest in the Blue Mountains of eastern Oregon, it's named the honey mushroom. Until 2002, we didn't know what was at the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way. We knew we were rotating around something, but it took us until the 21st century to figure out it was a supermassive black hole, with a mass 4 million times bigger than our Sun, located in a region of the Milky Way called Sagittarius A star. The discovery took place after we came up with the infrared smoke alarm. I can hardly imagine having to travel long distances without wheeled luggage, but these didn't pop up until 1970. If you think about it, the astronauts who went to the moon actually had to carry their baggage in the spaceship physically. The application for the U.S. patent for the wheeled luggage was granted back in 1972. But to be fair, those first ones weren't exceptionally reliable. They had problems like wobbling and tipping because the large suitcases were mounted on narrow wheeled bottoms. If you look at pictures of 1940s film stars, you'll see that their hair was nice and slicked back. Did you know that based on recent discoveries, even ancient Egyptians used some hair-molding substance? What they used, though, wasn't hair gel, if that's what you're thinking, because we only came up with this invention in the 1960s. What people used for hairstyling back then in the 1940s was called Brill Cream, which had more of a waxy consistency and was invented in 1929. Hair gel, as we know it today, came a bit later and was invented by a man named Louis Montoya. It soon became trendy because it wasn't as greasy as previous products. Speaking of bathrooms, and I am about to, back in ancient Roman times, they used some sort of, uh, well, wiping devices. But they were sticks with a sponge on top. 
individually perfumed sheets of paper that had the same purpose, appear to have been documented in China back in 589 CE. However, in the US, medicated paper for the water closet was marketed in the late 1850s, but the soft and comfortable variant of toilet paper was commercialized only in the 1930s, with the added bonus of being completely splinter-free. And I think we can all appreciate that. This one may not seem so recent, but hear me out. Modern research revealed that Saturn's rings are less than 100 million years old or so. That may seem like a lot, but if you think that the solar system formed about 4.5 billion years ago, it does shift your perception a bit, right? There are species of sharks on Earth that have been around in our waters four times longer than Saturn's rings. We figured this out using recent data regarding the mass of Saturn's rings and their ratio of dust and ice. With many of us resorting to e-commerce more and more these days, it's challenging to look at the traditional supermarket as some revolutionary invention. But we didn't have these for as long as you'd think, either. Do you know how the first supermarket appeared? Well, back in 1916, a shop owner named Clarence Saunders needed a solution to make his job less labor-intensive, since shopping around then meant he had to pick out all the products from the aisles and even deliver them to customers. So he thought about a new shop layout with a turnstile entry. People had to browse the shop in a single direction. He also made sure they were passing by all the available products. Customers could pick their items themselves and had to take their produce home. The shop owner could lower his prices with added efficiency, since he needed fewer people to run the business. Did you know there's still a state in the US where wearing a seatbelt isn't mandatory? Historically, using a seatbelt was voluntary. But people being the way they were, safety needed some enforcement. The state of New York was the first one to pass a law that enforced seatbelt wearing while driving, but only on December 1, 1984. Still, to this day in New Hampshire, there are no laws on the matter. The modern can opener, the one with the spinning wheel, was first introduced to the market in 1870. Now, that may not be remarkable, but it seems odd when you think canned foods were already available for some decades. Before this invention, we were told to literally cut around the top of the can near the outer edge with a chisel and hammer. You got a meal and an excellent workout all in one. Did you know that standardized time became enforceable by law only in 1880? The current system that we use now, GMT, for Greenwich Mean Time, became a common practice in most countries even later, somewhere by the end of the 1920s. Now, we used to estimate what time it was by looking at the sun's position in the sky. We then evolved to using clocks, but they were still dependent on the sun's position in a particular town or village. That meant time could differ slightly between two neighboring communities. And it wasn't that big of a deal for us until the invention of trains. As we started to travel faster and on longer distances, we needed to figure out a way to know when a train would leave and reach a certain destination, which could be helpful for all travelers in various locations. And frankly, it was about time.